What are some psychology experiments with interesting results? White rats and black rats were raised separately without seeing each other. When a black rat was placed in the white rat's cage, the other rats ostracized him. When white and black rats are raised together and a new black rat is placed in a cage, the white rats accept him. So basically rats are racist, unless raised to accept differences. I wonder about this one. Rats don't like any other rats that are not from their group. If you keep rats as pets, it's a whole big thing to introduce new rats into your old group. I imagine the results would have been similar no matter how they looked. Also red-eyed rats have pretty shitty eyesight. I'm late but nobody has said it yet. The self-fulfilling prophecy studies are very important to social psychology and their findings have many real-world applications. Basically they brought together a group of kids and formed a class with a real teacher. They gave the kids a test for overall academic skill at the start of the course, but didn't really use the scores. Instead they told the teachers that a few students, picked at random, were very brilliant and scores very highly. They then observed the class for a long period of time and noticed that the teachers gave the kids they thought were brilliant much more attention. At the end of the study the kids took the test again, and they found that the kids who were randomly named brilliant at the start actually scores higher than the rest of the class. The kids, again, at the start didn't score any different from the rest of the class, but through the self-fulfilling prophecy they became the best in their class. This obviously has tons of application in the world and especially education. The monster experiment. Although it is horrible how they left the children with mental health issues at the end, this experiment gave very good insight to how to parent a child. On this experiment, they took groups of orphan children and separated them into three groups. One was the control, the second were told they has a lips and were doing bad, and the third was told that their speech was perfect. As the experiment went on, group 2 began developing lisps after being berated constantly. They became shy and reserved. They were scared to speak because they didn't want to get in trouble because of their poor speaking skills. Group 3, however, had the opposite happen. They talked better, they were more willing to improve. They were encouraged to keep speaking and told that their speech was amazing and perfect. By the end of the experiment, they had one group with no change, one group with now mentally ill children with a speech impediment, and one group with great speaking skills. It truly shows that encouraging children is the way to go and that verbal abuse can be just as, if not more, harmful as physical abuse. Not entirely sure it fits into the category but the Rosenhan experiment 13 people feigned mental illnesses to get into the mental hospitals and all were admitted with different diagnoses. They then assumed their normal personalities but to be released they all had to admit that they were mentally ill. There was a second part where a hospital challenged Rosenhan to send multiple fake patients to the hospital and they would rate their patients on a scale of whether they think they were faking. They identified many possible fakers, but Rosenhan in fact hadn't sent anyone. These are my favorite kind of studies. I love it when participants are given power and then lied to lol. This one actually sounds pretty believable, and very interested, because people are most likely on different levels of mental illness, some worse than others, and when the mental hospital get told that some may be fake, they will second question every aspect of their health and most likely make a pressure decision whether the patient is ill or not. I think it really shows how much people treat mental illness as less than other illnesses. If Rasenhan sent patients to a hospital faking 1010 abdominal pain it would be absolutely be taken seriously. Lying to healthcare professionals about symptoms is going to change results. I believe the studios claimed they heard voices. These are serious symptoms. The Three Christs of Ypsilanti, psychologist forces three people who believe that they are Jesus Christ to live together. It does not go well. The psychologist, Milton Rokic, had heard of a case where two women who believed that they were Mary, mother of Christ, were forced to live together and one of them broke free from their delusion. So he figured, three Christs, what would happen? They were angry at each other often had physical fights. They eventually started getting along by avoiding the topic. He would ask them about the others and each would say that the others were crazy. That they, of course, were the real Jesus. No cures. 
Some unethical stuff. Interesting though. I was hoping to find this. The case study was in 1964. And they were all diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. They were all patients at Ypsilanti State Hospital. And while they didn't live together, they were in group therapy sessions. You can find the book on Amazon and there was a movie adaptation as well. I'm a huge fan of Milgram's small world experiment. It is more sociology than psychology, but I still think it is really cool. Milgram sends out 160 letters containing the name and address of a stockbroker in Boston to people in Omaha, Nebraska. They had to send it to someone they thought would get the letter closer, but they couldn't mail it directly to the stockbroker. Interestingly, most people that sent on the letter sent it on to the same group of people on the fifth degree. It only took six people, hence the six degrees of separation, to write. On average, it shows how interconnected our world is, even before the internet, which is happy to think about. Ro, how awesome that Milgram is famous for more than one experiment. And speaking of the internet, this is actually how packets on the internet are sent, TCPIP. When you look up a website, the protocol doesn't know exactly how to get there, it just asks nearby computers to get you closer, until you reach the website. Amazing how fast websites load considering this imperfect medium. If you stare into a dimly lit, that is candle lit. Mirror for 10 plus minutes you start to see hallucinations. What individuals see tends to vary, but they've used this as a test to simulate schizophrenia before because some sea monsters deformities general weird shit. I did a variation of it for a mate at university and completely wimped out of it. After my face started not looking like my face anymore, I had a complete dissociation. I stopped looking and just waited out the time. Edit. I can't find the exact study as I don't have journal access anymore but here's a decent summary of it in layman's terms. Edit 2. This is a weird visual trick that your brain can play on you, but the effects can seem super real so maybe don't do this if you are susceptible to hallucinations or a wimp with this kinda shit like me. Edit 3. Thanks for the gold and yes it is basically a scientific bloody Mary. Now what I know I'm doing tonight. Edit. Am I dyslexic? That edit made me laugh. Thanks a lot. The foundation of the folklore and subsequent scary game of Bloody Mary. A person goes into a darkened room with a candle or similar low light and stares into the mirror. After saying Bloody Mary a number of times a scary and a disfigured creature appears and starts staring back at you. It's fantastically frightening when you are having a night over with friends and you get each other more scared as they try it. And also the Three Kings ritual. Back from when Noilep was good. Adding additional detail if anyone wants it. It involves sitting yourself in a dark basement at 3 30 in the morning for an hour between two mirrors with a candle in front of you and a fan on low behind you you look straight ahead not at the candle and not at either of the mirrors the dancing candlelight in your peripheral vision coupled with likely being tired makes your brain do some really crazy stuff yeah no thanks I love learning about infant development. My favorite was probably the development of depth perception or perhaps the fear of heights. We're not born with it but, if I recall correctly, we develop it within the first year or so. Scientists created a raised square platform. Half of the floor was wood and the other glass. The actual surface of the floor, one meter or so below, was white with red polka dots. At varying intervals of age the babies would be brought in and placed on the wood end and encouraged to crawl to their moms who were standing at the glass end of the platform. In early infancy baby crawls over there without giving a shit. At some point though they stop at the point where the wood meets the glass, or plexiglass maybe, showing that they recognize the difference in height and the fear of falling. Babies brains are pretty freaking cool. The most fascinating part about these experiments was for me. This fear of heights depends on the way infants move and has to be relearned once they switch from crawling to walking. More precisely, very young infants crawl over the edge, then learn to avoid it. Later, when they learn how to walk, they again walk over the edge, seemingly forgetting their fear of heights. Finally, they relearn it and avoid the edge while walking. 2. They did this with other animals and they all showed similar learning stages although when turtles were put on it the babies tried to dive into the glass haha <laughs> lol. 
reconsolidation. When you retrieve a memory from your long-term memory it is susceptible to being manipulated. This can lead to, to memories being totally changed from the source. This is why eyewitness accounts cannot be fully seen as true. This knowledge is also being used to help people with PTSD by changing the negative memories they have of their particular trauma. You have been banned from Mandalay effect. Could I just remember this wrong? Number. The entire universe has changed. The influence of the color red in sports. Judges were shown a video of a take one do match and awarded more points to the red competitor versus the blue competitor. When the colors were digitally reversed, judges awarded more points to the other, now red, competitor. Edit. Since there's a lot more interest than I expected, here's some more info. Red may be a signal of dominance as reddened skin is associated with higher testosterone, or possibly higher fertility in women. Wearing red may induce intrinsic psychological effects which increase dominance in addition to altering the perception of others. Researchers found that putting red leg bands on birds increased dominant behavior, as they took the lion's share of the food. For my psychology degree dissertation, I presented photos of men to be rated on a scale of friendly 0, to threatening, 10. Men received a higher threat score if I photoshopped their t-shirt to be red. Edit 2. Thank you for the gold award. Oh, yeah, fun fact. They combat this bias with right hand bias. Judges get two triggers to click to award each color a point, and the right trigger is blue, since it's been shown that people tend to apparently unconsciously favor their right. Source. I spent a few years refereeing for local tournaments. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm only 16 so I hope you didn't cringe from the editing. I hope we can get to 50,000 subscribers because I wouldn't be here without all of you. So thank you so much for your time and energy, and please subscribe.